It's been a while since I've covered a Warriors game, hasn't it? Also, I never did review Dynasty Warrior 4's two expansions, Extreme Legends and Empires yet. Well, I think it's time to wrap them up and move on to other titles. Today, we'll finally review Dynasty Warriors 4 Extreme Legends, a PlayStation 2 exclusive, much like Empires, despite the base game being on Xbox, PS2, and PC. Don't you think, brother? I would like to agree. But... But it is what it is. Omega Force has always preferred PlayStation to any other platform over the decades of this franchise's existence. Yes, Dynasty Warriors is nearly 30 years old, and during those 27 years of being an infamous, but only in the West, series, they've made a few great games, some average ones, and a ton of bad ones. S sweetheart it wasn't my fault! I'll get him next time, alright? <laughs> no, not alright. I'm really getting tired of your excuses. Alright, alright! So, is Dynasty Warriors 4 Extreme Legends another one of those bad ones? Well, let's jump into the review finally, starting out with the combat. I fight for myself, and only for myself. I do not care about Don Zhuo. Dynasty Warriors 4 has the best combat of the classic games. Sure, it's lock-on combat of old, but it works. There's satisfaction in pulling off combos and slaughtering hordes of enemies, not to mention the fact the AI is aggressive for a console entry, as usually the AI is too stupid to fight back, given CPU limitations of consoles at the time. Hence why Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper on PC had better AI as a selling point, to which it was more aggressive than the PS2 version of DW4. Here of course, it's not as good, but they will try to kill you more so than the base game AI. What the hell? No, 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 no. Certain characters do play better than others, such as Lu Bu being the best for clearing hordes and Zhao Yun being best for beginner's pick. You have your block, weak attack, strong attack, jump weak attack, jump strong attack, Masuo attack, and bow, to which sucks, and I never really use it outside of emergencies, like I'm about to die and need to pick off officers from afar. Otherwise, I never used the bow, and was glad it got removed from later games. Horses are still bad, and you cannot call them to you. Wherever your horse is, it's still standing there waiting for you to come to it. Horse movement, an old school Resident Evil tankish as can be. As for the combat, just don't. Just don't bother using the horse during combat. Coco, let me handle this. It does suck the a a enemy can block your attack so easily but you cannot in turn. This also can get annoying when you're trying to use a Masuo attack and they block the entire thing. Now, if you tried that, it would end poorly. Dynasty Warriors of old feels a bit like Yakuza 3 in that regard, just standing there blocking most of your attacks and then attacking you with unblockable ones. Dynasty Warriors 4 is the first game in the series to introduce Officer Edit. Of course, it's vastly limited in what you can do outside of naming your character with a small character limit to the name. You can pick one of three presets for your head, chest, arm, and legs. Then you can pick from several colors of blue, red, green, yellow, purple, and white. You cannot pick your skin color or face. It's predetermined based on which character model you selected let alone, if you pick the color purple, then you'll be darker skinned, while every other color is light. I ain't even, I ain't even going near that. 
It's an okay mode that was expanded upon with each later installment via their Empire's expansion, as DW4 would be the first and last entry to include Officer Edit in the base game. Plus, it's the only one to feature Bodyguard Edit as well, so let's talk about that one. Let us go! My brother's destiny awaits! That's right, for the first and only time ever, we can now make our very own bodyguards. Except, not really, as we're just picking a pre-made model of male or female with new options once you complete the requirements or just by playing Extreme Legends. Then we name each bodyguard within the group, and that's it. So yeah, nothing special, and I do not miss it in later games, except I do miss the AI putting up a fight in later games common complaint with us older Warrior fans who grew up with the PS2 games. Back when you had to work hard to get 1000 kills, back when you had to be careful about pushing forward into enemy forces just to kill the enemy commander, back when you shitted your pants when Lu Bu came running at you cause you're not strong enough yet to face him. Which was the style at the time? So then let's talk about Legend Mode. In this mode, each of the 42 playable officers have one unique stage made for them. Jesus Christ! Yes, that means you need to play the game 42 times to complete it. Talk about grindy and not worth it. Even if the game is good, I hate grinding and will only cover a select few legend mode stages. So let's start out with Lubu. Butter! Come in, <laughs> for Lubu, his stage is Hulao Gate where you just slaughter most of the Alliance's army, killing hundreds of troops and taking out each faction's unique officers like Tao Tao, Liu Bei, Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, Sun Jian, and more. Though I may die, the Sun family will prevail. Just clearing waves upon waves of pitiful insects dwindling down their morale, the stage is a whole lot of fun and also satisfying to play. Lu Bu's moveset is one of the best after all. Hmm. Worthless fodder! Take this! Yeah! Villains like you are responsible for the current chaos. Is talking all you are good for? If you seek power, then show your might! Lu Shun is the worst one that I've played by far. His entire stage is comprised of Zhuge Leon's Stone Sentinel Maze, which was dumbed down in later games for a reason. It sucks. It's not fun. There's nothing to enjoy about this Extreme Legends counterpart of it either. You just run around aimlessly, slowly, with nothing to do after a while, as you have to find the right path of the maze to trigger another ambush, and for more of the statues to go down and up, changing your route. After 10 minutes of this hellish experience, I just gave up and pressed the classic reset combination of start and select. Sun Jian has a stage where Dong Zhuo attacks his home. You must rush towards the castle and stop him from getting in. This is a timed level, and if he gets in, it can lead to a game over if you don't quickly defeat him first. All the while fighting every one of Zhao's officers and avoiding Lu Bu, because if he was a problem in the base game, just imagine facing him in Extreme Legends given the increased difficulty and aggression. Bend over and grab your oh, and of course, I have to mention it. 
<laughs> it's Steve Bloom. Enemy officer defeated. He's voicing Soon Jian. <laughs> you didn't need to post that. Why? Why did you post it? Hmm. It's too late now to delete it. Now we just have to live with it. Sima Yi has probably the toughest of all stages next to Tao Tao himself, which I'll cover later, but for Sima Yi, it's just ball torture. I mean, look at it. Just non-stop explosions and archer attacks while trying to escape the fire, constantly dwindling away what little health you have. This stage really pushed me to my limits as I struggled to fight alone against hundreds of troops and officers. This stage also was where I learned of Simi Yi's god awful Masuo attack, as I explained earlier, with the camera and all. Every time you defeat an officer or garrison of soldiers, more just spawn in their place. It's just a non-stop gauntlet of enemies where your goal is just to escape. Which is easier said than done. But I won't let you get away so easily. Yu Ying, being the wife of Zhuge Lian, is quite smart inventing a new weapon called the Juggernaut, a wheel-based death trap of fire. Your goal is to protect them from all being destroyed or it's game over. All the while, you must defeat each of the five Tiger Generals of Shu. Each time you defeat one, a new Juggernaut spawns in nearby to make up for any that were destroyed. It's a slow, boring, difficult, glorified escort mission with tons of ambushes and slow, useless escorts you need to protect. This was one of my least favorites. It appears we can use this in battle immediately. Tao Tao was my first stage I played and it was grueling. Just trying to not die as enemies are dealing high damage to me as a level 1 character trying to escape from the failed Chur B campaign. I was just running in circles most of the time, building my Masuo gauge to attack everyone in hopes of not getting hit and dying, losing all my progress. Wow, you're pretty good. Seriously, if you love unbalanced bullshit, then this stage is perfect for you. I didn't really enjoy it because of the difficulty spike. I mean, I'm only level 1. Why is it too challenging? At least some of the others give you more of a fighting chance, but here, just bite onto the ball gag and enjoy being ass fucked. Oh Christ! Zhao Yun, of course, has the iconic stage of him trying to rescue Liu Bei's baby son, all the while fighting through thousands of Tao Tao's troops and officers. This stage is actually quite easy. You just run around and destroy crates till you find the baby lord. I would have liked to have seen the chaos end. After that, you must get to Liu Bei and help him get to the escape point. Zhuge Leon will arrive to help out too. Otherwise, it's not difficult, but there's a lot of fighting with one of the better movesets. My lord! Ah, Zhao Yun! I am sorry to be late. The young lord is safe. That is all very well, but more than that, I am happy to see that you return safely. I'd ship that.
Bro, you telling me you're not even gonna show the gay porn? Bro, should I just turn this off right now? What's the point? Damn, I did that just get scammed? Now that we're done covering some of the legend mode stages, we can move on to a mode I absolutely hated in Dynasty Warriors 5 Extreme Legends. That being Extreme Mode, where you play as anyone you want including your edit officer, as you must complete challenges without ever healing outside of the shop before battle if you chose the battle with a shop option. But the healing items and stat boost items cost a fortune, so how do you make money? By completing battles and objectives within them. It's a grueling gauntlet of survival. Eventually you will die or retire. There's no real way to win. There's no end game. You just survive for the sake of surviving. At first it's nothing, but as you complete a stage, the game's difficulty rises, but your stats do not. Your health not recovering outside of expensive meat buns as well, this leads to a lot of frustration. Honestly, at first, it wasn't that bad, mostly because it's Dynasty Warriors 4 and not Dynasty Warriors 5. There's better stages, combat music, art direction, voice acting, and whatnot that keeps me from getting bored too quickly. But eventually I did give up and just let the enemy kill me so I could just quit and move on to the other modes. Speaking of other modes, the last one is challenge mode. I never covered this mode for a while. The only exception I can remember was Dynasty Warriors 7 Extreme Legends Definitive Edition. Yeah, the Japanese love their long titles. Gotta compensate for what they lack below. You are American? Yes. Oh, you must have very big penis. Endurance has you fighting non-stop enemies till you die. Of course, I chose Lu Bu for this cause who else is better suited for taking out dozens of enemies at once? Especially in these older games before a single press of the square button got you a thousand KOs. The worst part about this mode is the stage. It's just a large square with enemies at each corner as you have to slowly move around to reach them. Unlike DW7XL, where it was a smaller castle courtyard where the enemies came at you. Eventually, I got bored and allowed the AI to defeat me so I could try the four other modes within challenge mode. Time Attack has you trying to defeat every enemy within a short time, which is easier said than done. When you start up the game for the first time, it will ask you to import your data from the base game of Dynasty Warriors 4, which isn't possible as I played through the Hyper version on PC and not the PS2 version. So this meant I didn't have any high level characters unlocked items or upgraded weapons. I was starting from rock bottom, to which this mode taught me just how bad of a decision that was. Bridge melee has you knocking enemies off the platform that's really not a bridge. You cannot kill them unless you knock them off. If you do, it counts as a KO but the characters and their movesets can be a con, leading you to fall off the platform and losing. Can I just have a break? Can I just have one break? 
Demolition has you destroying jars, crates, wooden oxes, juggernauts, and battering rams turned points. You must get as many points as possible within the small time frame. The mode is okay, but nothing great. I found myself getting bored just smashing wood and stone until the juggernauts showed up. Why couldn't they be this effective when I needed them to be in Yu Ying's legend mode stage? The last mode is Arena, and just takes the base game's dual mode and renaming it. You just fight every officer over and over again, your goal is just to defeat as many as possible as you can before you eventually lose. God, I hate the constant blocking of all my attacks, why can't I block theirs? Out of all Dynasty Warriors games, I consider DW4 to have one of the best soundtracks to date. It mixes traditional Chinese music with rock, techno, and metal, blending the classic Dynasty Warriors music of old with more faithful to the setting and oriental tone. But of course, add some heavy guitar riffs to bang your head as you slay over a thousand troops at Hulo Gate. One aspect of these older Warriors games, namely the PlayStation 2 games, is a lack of control over the camera. It's fixed behind you at all times, and only moves when it wants to, or if you block for a quick second to readjust. It also spazzes out when you use your Masu attack which can lead to you missing enemies around you, as well as then spin you around with the camera and attack nothing instead of your desired target. This will vary depending on which character you're playing, however, I found Sima Yi to be the worst defender of this camera system. They seem to have kept the voice cast from the base game. Unlike Dynasty Warriors 4 Empires, which gave us an entirely new set of voice actors, this is of course inexcusable. How dare you replace Steve Blum with an imitation? He was the best Sun Jian. He has good eyes, that one. Like a dragon rising to the heavens. Though some of the voice actors are a bit spotty, as some voices don't really fit these characters, such as Jean He. A beautiful flower must one day shed its petals, much like the Han. Be quiet! Do not even think such things! Let us go then, my lord. Restoring peace and tranquility is the duty of a loyal Han retainer. Yes. Otherwise, no complaints. Out of this classic era of Dynasty Warriors, I consider DW4 to have the best voice cast overall. DW5 was just imitation, and 3 was a joke. Common swine. You won't be so smug for long. The last thing to talk about is the encyclopedia. Here we can read up about the Three Kingdoms, view all officers, weapons, and items unlocked. It's a nice little option to see what we have and to read about history slash fantasy, given these games are based on a romanticized version of Chinese history with many lies and not really factual. Huh? How did you? At the end of the day, Dynasty Warriors 4 Extreme Legends is a fine game. It's nothing great nor bad. It sits right in the middle of an average, and I do recommend it. If they added new characters and more to do, it could have been even better, and more on par with Dynasty Warriors 7 Extreme Legends. Intolerable! This madman has deceived the people into self-ruin! But I'll give them credit for trying to make a level based around each of the 42 characters available in this entry. 
However, Extreme Mode sucked and it was a waste of time and resources. They could have focused on adding new characters and given us more story. But it is what it is. Wait, cousin. Despite some gripes, I did enjoy this Extreme Legends, which isn't common on my channel as I've condemned Dynasty Warriors 3 and 5 Extreme Legends as a waste to which they were. But also Samurai Warriors 1 Extreme Legends was a joke as well. The only good Extreme Legends expansion so far are DW7XL, SW2XL, and DW4XL. One day I'll tackle the rest of them. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later. Let's go! For the glory of the Soon family!